down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle alone, the baby awaits. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love the Lord Jesus, look down from the sky. And stay by my bedside till morning is nigh. In me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Close by me forever, and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care. And bid us forever to live with thee there. Yeah.
Christmas morning. Go tear it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tear it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Today we're going to talk about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and kind of look at it from a different angle. And this song is the basis for our message this morning. Mary, did you know that your baby baby boy would save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy is strong to make you new this child that you delivered will soon deliver you Mary did you know that your baby to a blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the sea with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod when you kissed your little baby? Then you kissed the face of God. Don't 
praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know Big child you're holding is a brave. Mary, did you know? Who was Mary? What did she know? Where did she come from? I want to talk about Mary this morning. Interestingly, we have no scripture telling us to worship Mary, but we certainly have good reason to adore and respect her. As far as most theologians believe, who have studied from history, of the secular history of the time and culture and such, Mary was likely only 13 to 15 years old. Today, that would be scandalous, even though it's not at all uncommon. A hundred years ago, in this country, it was normal for young women to get married at that age, but things changed, didn't they? Back in the Bible days when Mary lived, it was also common for, for women to get married at that age. The Industrial Revolution forced the norm to be much older in our country, in our time. But all that doesn't matter anyway, because it was God's plan. And God is always right. No matter what we might think, God is always right. <coughs> God had an angel go talk to Mary personally. Wouldn't it be nice if every time God spoke to us, when we petitioned God with a situation where we needed an answer, some direction, if He would send an angel to tell us face to face, say, hey, Dave, this is what you need to do. Wouldn't that be nice? But that's, that's, not how, that's not how it works most of the time. Uh, not usually. But God had an angel talk to Mary personally. Mary was chosen to do something God needed to be done. She was also needed to do something which was very unusual. Matter of fact, it only happened one time in the history of the world. But God choosing Mary to do something is no different than when God chooses us to do something. You see, we're going to have two directions in this message this morning. Talk about Mary, but what about us when God calls us to do something? God has something for all of us to do, and He calls us to do it. And you say, Brother David, well, I'm sitting in a wheelchair, or I have to use a walker, or, you know, like this and that and the other condition. You know, some of y'all might remember Papa Dan that, that lived here for a while. He was a minister, had been a minister all his life. He told me one day, he said, David, he said, I can't drive anymore and go and do things. And nobody's calling on me to preach anymore. He said, but you know, there's a steady stream of people in and out of my room every day. He was over at uh, the Waterford at the time. He said, you know, some of those people might need prayer. 
Some of them might not know Jesus. I can talk to them. I can tell them about Jesus. I can pray for them if they need prayer. Listen to them if they have something they need to talk about. You see, that's how we all ought to be. Here I am. What can I do in my situation? I can pray for God to improve my situation, or maybe He will. Maybe that's what God has for me right now. But there's something I can do in any situation where I find myself. I mean, uh, look at Joseph. He was in prison for something he didn't do, and God used him there because he listened. And God told, talk to him, just like God talks to us, and he did what God asked him to do. It's just that what God called Mary to do, give birth to the Savior, well, that would be a very high calling, wouldn't it? But Mary had a choice, and she chose to obey God. Luke chapter 1, verse 30, But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born to be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. For no God word from God will ever fail. Mary replied, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. What do we say whenever God calls us to do something? Oh, you want me to talk to that guy? I don't like him. And he doesn't like me. Maybe he wants you to talk to this person over here. I don't like them and they don't like me. I can't, I'm, I'm shy, Lord. I can't do that. What did Mary say? She had no idea. She was a young, just a teenage girl. She had no idea. What did she say when God called her? I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. In other words, she says, let's do this. Whatever you want, God, it's got to be right. Let's do this. I'm in with it. And that should be our answer when God calls us to do something. Let's get on with the program. Let's do this. When God calls us to do something, it's always best to heed His calling. God will never call you to do something that you can't do. Just like with Mary, God equipped her to do what He asked. Part of that equipping was for God to also speak to Joseph, the man who she was engaged to. You know, I've been that age before. And if my fiance turned up pregnant and I had never been with her, I'd have no doubt that she'd been with someone because women don't just get pregnant like you get a virus. So that was a big obstacle. That would have been a big obstacle. So what did God do? What did I say? God equips us when He gives us something to do. Matthew chapter 1, verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. There's that angel again. In the nick of time, a hero arose. The angel showed up, making things very clear to Joseph that Mary had not been cheating on him. Mary could never have convinced Joseph of what had actually happened. She said, well, the Holy Spirit came on me and I just, I just got pregnant. 
And I'm going to add the Savior of the world. And Joseph would have said, oh, really? That's a good story. But you see, God intervened because He knew Joseph wasn't going to be able to believe our story. That was something Mary couldn't do, so God took care of it. God always equips us when He calls us. But what did Mary know and when did she know it? That's the question today. As the song goes, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would someday walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the seas with his hands? Mary was there when Jesus did his first miracle. He turned the water into wine. John chapter 2, verse 5. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Why did Mary say that? She trusted Jesus because in all her life, he'd done everything he said he was going to do. Who knows what Mary had seen when Jesus was growing up? I mean, she was raising God in the flesh. I don't know what he did out of the ordinary. We do know that he never backtalked her because that would have been sin. What a blessing that would be to raise a son that didn't backtalk you. <laughs> what did Mary know and when did she know it? This was at the start of Jesus' ministry. She hadn't seen all these miracles. And yet Mary knew. Mary obviously knew that Jesus could do things. She told them, do whatever He tells you to do. We don't know if Mary knew that Jesus could turn water into wine, but she knew something, what she had seen already. She had enough trust in Him that she told them to do what He said. And of course, He turned the water into wine, barrels of it. Later on, Jesus did many miracles, such as walking on the water, which I think is really cool, and calming the seas and bringing sight to blind men. As the song goes, the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary must have been so proud. Any mother would have been. She saved the day at this wedding feast. They had run out of wine. How embarrassing. And Jesus saved the day. She must have been so proud. What an honor and privilege it must have been to be the mother of Jesus. Little did Mary know that Jesus would save our sons and daughters. Little did she know that Jesus had come to make us all new. Little did Mary know that her little boy, sweet little baby Jesus, the baby she delivered would grow up and deliver her. Deliver her from her sins. You see, because Mary was one of us. She had sins just like we do. She needed salvation. And she had the opportunity to partake in the salvation that was provided by her son, baby Jesus. This little Mary, did she realize when she kissed her little baby that she kissed the face of God? The little baby was God in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. The incarnation of God. God come to earth to live among us. I think Mary knew all of this after Jesus ascended. It probably all made sense. But at the time when it was all happening, she was just probably goggle-eyed thinking, wow, look at this. This is awesome. But what was she thinking when she was at the foot of the cross? John chapter 19, verse 25. Near the cross of Jesus stood His mother, His mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw His mother there and the disciple whom He loved standing nearby, He said to her, Woman, here is your son. She was a lot of Marys back then. And we have a Mary with us today. At least one. 
Imagine the horror of seeing your son being executed. In the most vile form of execution, the most painful lingering death on a cross, Mary was there. Imagine what was running through her mind. Everything going back to the angel telling her that she'd give birth. The angel didn't tell her about this. And yet here she was. Mary was also there right after Jesus arose. I don't think she was surprised about that though because Mary was confident that whatever Jesus said, He did. Remember when He turned the water into wine? I'm sure she did. He said He'd come back after three days and He did. One thing Mary definitely do, knew, Jesus did what He said He would do every time. He always has and He always will. And I don't say any of this to elevate Mary. As I said earlier, Mary was an obedient child of God. She had no special qualifications. She had done nothing of her own to deserve this honor. But God chose her and she said, yes, Lord. You know, we all have opportunities to obey God or to tell God no. You know, you say, well, I'd never tell God no. Well, if God calls you to do something, you don't do it. What's that? You told God no. Billy Graham had an earthly mother. I doubt his mother ever expected him to be used so mightily by God. But each and every one of us has an earthly mother. God gave us life and used an earthly mother to facilitate that. Each and every one of us has the opportunity to serve God. And most ways we serve God aren't anything that the news would report on. Most ways aren't something we'd ever read about in a book or a newspaper. But even so, God notices when we obey Him. When we answer His call. <laughs> you know, I really don't have any desire to preach to crowds of thousands of people. I mean, that, that would have to be pretty cool to have, you know, a stadium full of people. And here's old Dave preaching. I mean, that would be cool. But you know what? God didn't call me to do that. God called me to preach right here at Swan Manor. And I'm proud to say that I said yes, Lord, when He called me to do that. It's awesome when we give in and do what God wants us to do because then God, when we give our permission, then God kicks in and He does His part. He paves the way. He equips us to do what He calls us to do. It's never too late to start anew. A new year is just around the corner. We talk about New Year's resolu resolutions, but why wait? Why don't we start today? Listen to God and answer His call. God has something for all of us to do. And God equips everybody that He calls. Put your faith in God and whatever it is that you're attempting to do that is in the will of God, it's going to work out. Even if it doesn't look like it, it's going to work out. Just like Mary. From what the angel told her, she had no idea what was going to happen. But... She put her faith in God and she says, yes, Lord. And that's what we need to do every morning. When we wake up, we say, God, what you want me to do today? And we need to say, yes, Lord, even before He tells us what it is. Amen? Well, let's sing another song. Navidad, 
Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Prospero on your Felicidad. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas, I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas, I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero on your Felicidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero on your Felicidad. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish. Bottom of my heart